Well, Amendment 2 is could have a huge effect, not just on education, but on a lot of services we depend on. So let's do a, a quick rundown about what this means on the ballot. This is the actual language that's going to be on there, but essentially the short version is this amendment, if passed, would give the legislature the authority to eliminate taxes on business equipment and property, as well as, uh, you know, personal property taxes on motor vehicles. And I think this was kind of thrown in as a sweetener to make it more popular, although, in fact, the lion's share of the tax cuts would go to, uh, you know, large businesses, many of which are out of state. And here's why it matters. Uh, property taxes in West Virginia, most of them actually go to local governments. Two thirds go to public schools, and you can see about another third goes to city and county governments to fund a variety of services. I mean, we're talking about parks, public libraries, public safety, 911, fire services, senior programs, uh, you name it kind of down the line. And only a tiny sliver of it actually goes to state government. So again, Amendment 2 would not eliminate these taxes, property taxes, but it would give the legislature the authority to do so. And we think it's pretty unlikely if they had the authority that they wouldn't use it. And what this means, it amounts to over more than one fourth of the property taxes would fall under the control of the legislature, which would change constitutional protections by our state to protect local government, local voters. Uh, and if you think about it, a lot of local property taxes are actually approved of super majorities of voters. People actually tend to set that. I think 44 out of West Virginia's 55 counties have some form of bond or levies that was approved by 60% or more of voters to support all kinds of things. Ambulance services clear down to, uh, again, libraries, uh, public safety. And this will basically override that local control. And uh, as you can see here on this pie chart, we're talking about a little over one fourth of that. And we can talk as we go on about what this means, but different counties around the state rely on property taxes to you know, a varying degree from running from 30 to 37%. I'm just using Kanawha County tonight as an example. I mean, if we could probably get data about other counties, but I thought Charleston NAACP. Kanawha is kind of high, more than a quarter of, uh, of its budget, you know, comes from property taxes. And this is what would mean, uh, this is actually the county breakdown for Kanawha. And again, you see it's about 60% for the schools and pretty consistent on what goes to county governments and cities. And uh, if this should go through, this would be the amount of loss of revenue if by phasing out the business equipment machinery and other personal property taxes in West Virginia. So you see it could be like a $19 million hit in the school excess levy, you know, a little bit more on the school regular levy uh, for a total of about $47 million that would that could be taken out of the county if the legislature goes ahead and phases out these taxes. Uh, we're talking about 7% of the Kanawha County school budget, but a much higher percent of the overall county budget. As you can see there, uh, you know, pretty, pretty high percentage there of the funds the county. And this is, you know, to break it down to get specific, you can see health departments, golly, what could go wrong with defunding health departments during a pandemic? I don't know. I have to, I'll have to get back to you on that one. We're talking fire departments, mental health services, infrastructure, recreation, you know, tourism, visitors, things. And again, Kanawha has a nice new library. Hope you guys get to go see it. I went for the first time this week. Uh, here's some other services. And, but basically, if this goes through, it would also affect not just regular property taxes, but voter approved levies. And what it means is it could mean that if you take this out, then the value of the taxes, like 27% of what goes into what levy support could disappear or future levies would rely, be more aggressive on their taxation. So homeowners and people with less resources would wind up paying more, you know, since these you know, large business equipment taxes aren't being paid anymore and which could potentially make levies more unpopular, which could result in defunding a lot of the services and things we care about. Uh, and again, this is just like an example of how some city governments use this and not a huge chunk goes to cities, but as you can see, I mean, everywhere from Smithers to Charleston to Montgomery to Nitro, it would have an effect 
if it were enacted and if they would actually choose to reduce it. Uh, and again, the sweetener thrown into the deal. And actually, I think Governor Justice lately is kind of with us on this one. I think with baby dog support in opposing Amendment 2, uh, the sweetener in the deal was it would phase out the tax on personal vehicles. <clears throat> but as you can see from this chart, that's a tiny slice of the pie. And by far the lion's share, more than 70% would go to businesses. And again, many of these are businesses located out of state. So, uh, and again, I think actually the governor this week came out with proposals uh, to actually give people a break on vehicle taxes without phasing out the other taxes that contribute so much to education and other things. So here's what the legislators say they could do. They believe that any loss to county governments, the legislature could make whole from the state budget. And the problem with that is, as you may have noticed, the last couple of years are not normal for a lot of reasons. And for one thing, the state government is flush with federal dollars as a result of COVID. So this is, this is like one-time money. These surpluses are not gonna be here forever. And so making decisions based on that, I think is a bit like, okay, I wanted $100 in the lottery this week. So I'm going to budget every week that we're going to, that I'm going to make $100 and just put that in my budget. And what you will find is that doesn't happen all the time. And so this chart was confusing to me at first, but if you look down at the bottom, it goes back to normal years pre-COVID and it shows just how much from the state budget they'd have to take from the state budget to make counties whole. And again, this would mean reducing the services the state budget pays for, which are again, public education, higher education, public safety, health and human resources, environmental protection, part DNR, you know, recreation and things like that. So it's like, yeah, if you make the counties whole, you'll be taking it out of the state budget as we've seen. So it's not like, uh, it's kind of dangerous to make long-term decisions based on very unusual situations. And just uh, in terms of research, West Virginia doesn't collect a lot of this data, but the state of Minnesota does. And what they found was that actually the majority of these taxes are exportable. That means the people who pay these taxes aren't actually in the state of Minnesota. And I think that's probably even more true of West Virginia, where a lot of the business equipment are like coal, oil, natural gas. And these are ne nearly all companies that are based out of state who you know, make their profits here and take them away and leave us to deal with all the other circumstances. Uh, and, you know, sometimes supporters of the Amendment 2 say West Virginia is an outlier in taxing this kind of thing. Actually, that's probably not the case. In the, most other states, regular property taxes are much higher, and they find other ways of taxing business and property. So it's it's kind of a, of a false argument there that doesn't really hold up. And uh, let's see. Oh, I think I hit the wrong button. I'm sorry, you guys. And the other thing I think it's interesting, there's a conservative group, the Tax Foundation, that actually says, as things are now, West Virginia has the ninth best for business property tax ranking in the country. So it's not like, you know, we're some extreme state. This is just clearly an example, I think, of a power grab for politicians to be able to control revenue that actually local voters decide about and vote upon to give tax breaks to corporations, many of which may support politicians who support the amendment. So just saying that. And here's an interesting point based on research in Ohio. Uh, there's some, someone did a study and what they found is by eliminating taxes on equipment, you might actually encourage employers to automate and create, eliminate jobs by relying more on machinery. And if you know anything about West Virginia, from the song John Henry clear up to our current situation, more and more jobs in the state have been automated, often by tax breaks supported by, by passed by the legislature and supported actually eliminating jobs. So this could have actually a kind of unintentional effect. And finally, you know, one of the ways we're getting toward the close, the idea that this is going to have a huge effect on improving West Virginia's business climate really doesn't hold up because state and local taxes make up less than 2% of the total overall cost of doing business. Most of the cost of doing business is things like paying employers, keeping utilities on, transportation, all the things that you do, you know, marketing and stuff like that. So it is a tiny part of this. And I heard my 10 minute alarm go off. So what we're talking about for businesses, this is a fraction of a fraction.
but the hurt it would do to education and other services is not a fraction. It's really pretty serious. So I will stop there. Uh, in general, though, it's a power grab. It can really hurt a lot of things we care about. Care about. And uh, with that, I will cut it out. Thank you so much for the chance to be here. Thank you, Rick.